Why, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever this day may find you or night may find you. Hopefully you're doing well while training. And to dive into today's design masterclass all about 3D design. So taking your 2D skills and all those fundamentals and bringing them into 3D. I want to say hello to, uh, let's see who we got. Rick Adams is here from Toronto. Always love hearing uh, where people are from. I love Toronto, such a melting pot. Love it. Favorite bar, Bar Chef. Uh, hopefully that's still open, but I love Bar Chef, my favorite cocktail bar there. Uh, Reverb Mike, what's up, buddy? Good to see you. Susan Wilson, uh, Judith Klinger, I see you there. Uh, Cody Bear's in the house. Always happy to have Cody Bear. Such talented individuals as well. Thank you, Michelle. Audio and video are good. So um, how are we doing? <clears throat> We're doing great. Just getting my voice warmed up. I got my coffee here. Um, today is a maple bourbon, so we're gonna go with our maple bourbon coffee. We're gonna get this party started because we're gonna do some 3D. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch screens and dive right into it. You know, it's like, hey, why, you know, why not? That's what I say. All right, Panama City, Florida, is that a real place? I've been to Panama. All right. Something does not taste right about that coffee. And I think it's the creamer. Okay, so let's dive into this. And uh, thank you so much for joining me. Kind of tweaking this a little bit. Possibilities are everywhere. We're gonna start out in Illustrator. Everything starts out in Illustrator. In fact, you know what? Let's not be so boring, Paul, huh? Why are you picking such a boring color? Let's go in, let's just, like jazz it up a little bit. Maybe we want a calming blue. Mm, boring, IBM. All right, let's go with the purple. Man, guys, there's something wrong with that coffee. I don't know if it's the creamer or what. So we'll take this, we'll have some fun. We're basically gonna make uh, some 3D out of this, but first let's get this started. I'm gonna take this, convert it to outlines, and just start like designing it. So this'll be fun. I'm just gonna kind of like play with this if you don't mind. And this is what we do as designers. We'll go in and say, hey, you know what? Let's uh, maybe stretch out, let's zoom in on this. Maybe stretch out. Uh, this P and the other letters, right? So I'm just kind of doing something like that, okay? Stretching out some of these. Let's have some separation. And again, I'm just like designing this. That's my goal. Just throw in some design flavor. Let's bring out that S and then this bottom part of this S and just kind of do something like that is what I'm is what I want to do. Just kind of tape, uh, creating a type lockup, right? Oh man, I might need, need to make some new coffee. Ungroup. Um, 3D, oh yeah. So I want to get right into 3D because the plan is to, yes, we're going to, of course, cover the 3D in Illustrator, right? This is a design masterclass. I know everybody uses Illustrator, okay? But also I want to dive into a uh, ton of other apps. So again, we have Dimension, we have Stager, like right down here, these apps, Dimension, uh, Sub Substance 3D Stager, Substance 3D Painter. There's currently a contest going on as well um, that I'm gonna talk about, sort of like designing your own shoe, painting your own shoe, uh, which will be a lot of fun. Um, and uh, I'm not gonna get into 3D Designer, that's node-based, that gets a little crazy, but I'm gonna do some Cinema 4D. So it's like creating 3D for designers. So uh, anyways, I'm just gonna edit and work on this a little bit because we wanna actually create something kind of cool, you know, that we're proud to post. And it really, at the end of the day, what do we know? It's all about like the design, right? And that's all I'm doing here is creating some fun type lockups. Ugh. Uh, stretch it out. What about this part? Yeah, take that, stretch it out. And uh, again, hopefully that sounds good to you guys. Yeah, the real Adobe sneakers. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay. Don't mind me, just giving this a little bit of flavor. You can typically modify letters all you want. Uh, you just want to typically be uh, careful with the first and last letters. As soon as you start, you know, messing with these letters too much, the ones on the beginning and the end, you start to lose the legibility of it. So, 
Uh, and again, I'm just having fun here. I hope you don't mind stretching and condensing these letters to make something kind of cool. Right? So it's like, you're kind of like looking around. Possibilities are everywhere. Right? And that's the whole idea of like, you know, sort of like a panoramic look at uh, text and possibilities. All right? Does that work for you guys? Um, yeah, so Miriam, the case is we bought the company Substance, and they are the ones that already had all of the different apps. So that's kind of the situation. And uh, so yeah, for a lot of games and 3D modeling, a lot of the painting of those textures and materials, that's done with these two, these, these substance tools. Okay, so that's kind of what's going on. I just want to kind of show you what, they're do what they do. I, I just kind of want to, I need to be aware of what they do, of course, as an Adobe employee. Okay, so there we go. Does something like this work? Does this work? Oh, wow. Holy cow. Okay, so Bobby Orlando. Uh, Bobby, let me know uh, if it's a seven-day or a 30-day uh, trial. I would be curious to know. Uh, typically, I think there's seven days, but I don't know. Just need you to confirm if you could. Do I stretch this all the way across? Thoughts? Yeah, why not? All right, so we have this kind of squared away. Um, I'm just gonna fix this a little bit more and then we'll make it 3D in Illustrator. Okay, then, because basically what I'm doing right now, Andreas, and Michelle and everyone is, okay, Bobby, thank you so much. 30 day trial, thank goodness. Whew, better not be seven, that's not enough time. Um, is I'm gonna make these 3D in Illustrator. So Illustrator can make OBJ files. So that's why I'm kind of spending some time on this. Okay, notice sometimes you have a hard time selecting, like when things are condensed down, I'm having a hard time clicking on this point right in here, right? You could change that in Illustrator if you go to, uh, let's take a look. We will go off to the side, selection and anchor display. So you can change the size of your handles up to max if you want to, right? And there's the handle style, but let's just go like that. So now when we, we should see these like bigger and a little bit easier to grab, even though I'm still on the struggle bus. There might be just a lot of points in one spot. I'm like, okay, buddy, why, why you gotta, why you gotta be so difficult? There we go. Um, yeah, I don't know if this part's working. Okay, you get the idea. I'm just a big believer in 3D being the future. Like if we take a look, look, look what I was doing earlier. Let's just see if I have, well, not that one. But again, just on Pinterest, right? Type in abstract 3D design or just 3D design and see what you get. Like all of this stuff, sort of I think these um, 3D tools in the hands of designers is where it's at, right? It's just so impressive everything you can do. So hopefully this stuff like inspires you and half the time what you're trying to do in Illustrator and Photoshop is you're trying to fake 3D anyway. So I'm like, yeah, maybe, why don't I just make it 3D than trying to fake it all the time? <laughs> you know, even this, look at that. Awesome. These are abstract shape pastel, who knows what that is. All right, again, just on Pinterest, just to get us excited. Gorgeous little spins and curves and fun stuff like this, right? Totally into it. Hopefully you are as well. 
Also, did you see the other tab open? I had to double check to make sure I spelled the word possibility correctly. All right, I'm not crazy about this t possibilities. Like, I don't know about the top part, but we'll go with it, huh? It looks pretty good so far. Um, each letter is separated out. Okay, might make them a little bit lighter. You know me, heck, I'm gonna go with pink. I think we're just, we're gonna get, we could, we could go with a dusty pink, maybe, something like that, okay? So we could see a lot more of that shading. But what I am gonna do is I'm gonna just like, maybe I'll just group everything. Um, oh, the great shoe case con contest, exactly. That's what I'm gonna show. So, um, yeah, maybe I'll take everything, I will group it, and now we'll make it 3D. So effect, 3D materials, we'll just do an extrude and bevel, and then we have classic down here. Again, this is brand new, we'll go right there. Um, but with dimension, if you're doing text, you need to essentially expand the text to make each letter an object. Yeah, you will have, ex and by the way, Bliss, you can't, you can't actually create 3D in dimension, which is kind of a bummer, right? So there we have it. This already looks like 100 times better. Before I typically even do that, I'll undo that and I will just simplify it because did you notice, command Y, select everything, there are like, there might be additional points that are not needed. So a lot of times I'll just go into objects. I want my 3D objects to be as clean as possible. So I'll go in to simplify, right? So a couple of those points have changed just a couple of them, but but really you can't tell, right? This B looks a little funky, right? So we can always kind of clean that up. Uh, but I'm just using fewer points. It's going to be easier when it comes to 3D uh, with those different meshes. So I'll go back in there to effect. We'll wait for it. <clears throat> effect, 3D materials, extrude and bevel. There we go. We have our text. And typically I'll create backups as well. So I'll take this layer, I'll duplicate it because I know I'm going to just be playing around a lot in here, right? So there we have that. So that's easy enough, right? Um, I usually do, uh, I like this look. We'll do front. So now it's a 3D object, okay? It's a 3D object. We're viewing the front and sure we can like rotate it and do all that stuff, right? Get the angle that we want, but you get the idea. But uh, ooh, even this looks nice. This is like a slight angle right over here. Oh, it's just uh, 173 instead of a 180 rotation. Um, so that might be kind of nice. But either way, I'll do front. I'll throw some, make sure there's some lighting on it, but I'm going to turn on shadows, right? Give it a nice shadow and make sure the rotation of the light kind of coming from the other side and we'll make it taller right so we don't want to have a lot there but we're just going to give it a nice shadow like so and we'll turn on ray tracing right up here so we'll render that out and we could literally be done this is going to be awesome i like the pink too uh it wasn't uh dusty like this dusty pink um it, it was, if it wasn't the official color of the year, it was the unofficial color of the year uh, a couple of years ago, right? This millennial pink, as they call it as well. So render that out. Sometimes if you cast shadows while this is rendering, uh, be mindful of the shadow bounds. So if the shadow is getting cut off, the shadow bounds is too small. Uh, what we do in the shadows, exactly. Reverb Mike said it. What we do in the shadows is hilarious, and I love, I love it. <laughs> love the movie, the series, can't get enough. So good. Okay, that's, that's okay, right? We could decrease or increase the softness of that light and all that stuff. I was actually hoping for something a little bit better, to be honest with you, um, but you kind of never know. So typically you'll just do a render and this will be your JPEG that you export out, okay? But you could try rendering it and then you can turn that off, uh, just so be mindful of that. Uh, turn that off while you're working, it's gonna make it easier on yourself. Any other uh, what we do in the shadows fans out there? Totally curious. <laughs> Okay, so we'll turn off uh, 3D there. Excuse me, turn off the shadows. We made our 3D objects. 
Bliss is into what we do in the shadows. Oh yeah. Into it. And then you start to see these progress bars, because guess what? Welcome to 3D. This is what it's like. It's still 3D, by the way. The angle and all this stuff kind of really doesn't matter, right? So we can do isometric, right? We'll wait for it to, I better have the rendering turned off, by the way. Did I not turn it off? Because it's taking a while, right? So again, I'll check that in a second. And I'm curious as to who my, Alexander's a 3D pro. Who are my other 3D uh, sort of uh, experts out there? Or who knows, who's dabbled in 3D to some degree? I would love to hear. Okay, we have our 3D, we're gonna export this out. But I'm gonna do one more thing with it. Right, because we've covered we've covered this. This is great. It's a new feature in Illustrator. Fantastic. Why does it keep rendering it? Why? I turned it off, I swear. Finally, it better be turned off. So again, just go up here. If it's taking a while, click in here. This should be off. Okay, you're currently in real-time preview. Thank you very much. I thought I shut it off. Okay, so one thing I, I, I could export this out, by the way, and I'll show you what that looks like. We'll to, go to Asset Export, right? We can drop that into our Asset Export panel. It doesn't really even matter that it's at an angle, right? Uh, but right down here, usually this is set to ping or JPEG in the Asset Export. And right in here, again, I don't think this is intuitive, and I think this is probably the most important part of this hour, is exporting out this OBJ, right? So make it a 3D object file, right? So that's what we're doing with all of the text. We'll click Export export it out to our desktop sounds good and it exported out asset one okay this 3d is like anything else in 3d i'm just gonna remove that 3d because really i want to ungroup it and i want each individual letter uh, yeah each line is going to be a 3d element because that's just going to give me more flexibility once I'm in, uh, you know, dimension or stager or name the, uh, you know, app of your choice. So we'll do posse, ba -ba, bam, shaboom, shablamo. Right, we'll go over here, we'll name everything. I don't know if I would, if may, I probably would name it correctly because this'll, this'll help as we bring it into 3D apps. And as always, if you are joining for the first time, I'd love to hear from you. Okay, so keep in mind, now that I've put all of these in the asset export panel, and I'll actually make this a little smaller so we can see it better. Asset export panel. And by the way, right down here, we're still working on this 3D. As you notice, as it says right down here, this is a technology preview. So I know Alexander knows 3D, want, probably wants more from the panel. Like I get it, I agree. I wanna, I wanna be able to leak. I need to find out what, what's next because I wanna be able to leak that inf information to you. I wouldn't really. That's how I've been able to keep my job so long. I haven't leaked any info, <laughs> I know better. So you do need to select all of these. Just shift select all of those, change this to, oh wait, hold on. Oh, they're not 3D, that's why. Silly me, oh, I'm such a goofball. Right over here, we'll just extrude, shabam. Take this one, shaboom, shitty. And watch what's happening. I did that on purpose, just so you can see that it's actually, um, you know, it's linked back to these objects. So all these assets are actually updated as well, okay? I didn't even get into all of these because I can take this, this posse, I could change this to say revolve for instance. Notice how it's revolving 360 degrees. You can't tell that it's a word. Well, let's rotate that back around. And we should be able to offset that. Hold on. Let's 
go. Move that down. So you can see what it's doing. It's doing this revolve. Uh, let's bring it in some. There we go. Still says possibilities. Cool. You get the idea. Let's undo that. And bil abilities are everywhere. That's right. Ah. Oh. There we go. Okay, so we are back. We've made everything 3D. We can now, as we click down here, now OBJ is available. Now we can select it and export that out. Of course, to our desktop. It's gonna kick everything out. And we made our 3D objects. So think about creating any typeface or any sort of logo, whatever you wanna do. Create that in 3D and you can see right over here. Here's our posse, here's our full phrase and all of our 3D elements, right? So you're not able to do this in Dimension, right? But now we could use Dimension or Stager. Dimension or Stager, almost, you know, virtually interchangeable almost at this point because they're, uh, they're just similar products, okay? So let's take that, we'll open up Stager. I'm gonna use Substance 3D Stager. I'm gonna grab this, drop it in, boom, there it is. Hit this little button at the top, Ah, let me see it. Shove bam. There it is. Guess what? Move it to the ground. Shadoosh. Like that. Okay. Man, I've been using lots of sound effects lately. So there we go. We have our text. We drop that into place. And we get to have fun playing with all of this. Right? The cool thing is we have all these fun controls on them. So we could really like stretch this out uh, or make it just a, more of a shadow, shallow... Um, extrusion if we want to let's drop this in move that to the ground move that up you get the idea okay we'll do this billy's r you might not want the ground notice how it's cutting it off well hey we'll just go over here we will go to environment and then we will turn off the ground. Turning off the ground, and now they're all floating in 3D space. Our every... So they're melting into, we're gonna have so much fun with this. Uh, I can use my shortcut keys to pan and zoom. There we go. Everywhere. There's the, where's the where? That's right, there. Uh, grab you. Where are you, buddy? There you are back there. Did. All right, now we get to have some fun with this. So using my one key, or excuse me, yeah, holding down my one key and clicking and dragging, we can start to rotate this around. Two key is gonna allow us to pan, and then we have like our zoom as well. And we can see how off everything is. But we can have some fun with this now. Hello, Muriel, I see you out there. I'm so sorry I was ignoring that chat. Harry Rutherford. Uh, Okay, good, Harry likes the design. Good morning, Anthony and everyone. Sony Braswell's here, we can officially begin. Sony is here. Okay, I was putting everything in at an angle. Um, I have one camera there. I could add a camera, so typically I'll have my camera that I'm actually gonna render everything out at. Right, so that's what I would typically do. Um, and then not, just like, not use that camera or use a different camera when moving everything around. But anyway, 
everything's kind of on a different plane. This could be good, could be bad. But we'll just kind of adjust everything. Remember, this one I extruded a lot. I kind of like that, by the way. So you could take that and extrude it as well. You guys might be wondering, and somebody usually is like, you know, hey, you could, uh, you could type in and use text in Dimension or Stager as well. I like it having this like thickness. Again, we're just gonna try some things. Ooh. This happens a lot as well. Man, my keyboard is moving. My Bluetooth keyboard needs to be plugged directly into the computer in order for this to <laughs> go faster. All right, there we have it. They could all have different depths. That will be fun. They could melt in one into the next. Um, yeah, there's lots of fun things we could do with this at this point. But again, we want to start out with a strong... Come on, keyboard. Yeah. I literally feel like I'm lifting moving bricks. My keyboard's not quite responding. It's like, oh, these materials are so heavy. Must stack everything. <sighs> Let's take a look at environment. All right, we got a full day of fun stuff. Notice how we see this snapping as it hits that plane, right? So I know it's resting on top. And uh, from there, hey, let's just go ahead and take a look at this. Let's turn on ray tracing. We start to get an idea of the shadows. So just like we are using that render button in Illustrator, this is like roughly the equivalent, okay? Not crazy about the background? Hey, we could change that. Let's go ahead and let's make it white. Let's play some, play some fun colors and uh, work with it some more. So satin, um, I I've been using this gloss paint a lot just because I like how shiny it is, okay? Um, and then changing the colors. So I'll, I'm gonna use a lot of pastels. I'm really into this whole pastel thing. Ooh, geez. Okay. Pastels. Because when you think about possibilities, oh, it's just full of optimism. You're like, oh, possibilities? Yeah, it's going to be bright and just, you know, full of optimism. Like, yeah, pastels, bright colors. Let's go with a yellow or a gold. You tend to lose yellow, like especially when it's on white, so I lean more toward gold. And uh, what about this last one? What color is speaking to you? Teal? Let's go with the teal. Something like that. I don't know, maybe this is ugly, that's okay. All right, so there we have that. I'm gonna move into some other, we're 30 minutes in. We're actually, we were in Illustrator, now we're in Substance 3D Stager. Uh, and I'm gonna play with this some more, if you don't mind. Let's turn off ray tracing. I could actually work in the ray tracing mode um, if I want. I'm gonna group all of these objects. They're in this one group now, and you notice up here, these are all of my lovely little layers. I was really hoping that when I brought in those models, um, that it would actually like uh, give it a name. So let me go back in here really fast. Let's twirl this down. And we're just going to call this layer, this 3D object, Posse.
And I'm just gonna export out this one. We'll call it Posse 2. I'm just gonna try something really fast. Basically, I wanna get the name of that layer into Stager. No. Nope. File import 3D model. Let's see if this changes anything. Nope. Okay. Never mind. I don't know how to bring in the name, the same name of the model, into the app. So uh, you get the idea. Rufus is in the house. All right. More of a possibilist than an optimist. Rufus, what's up, man? It's good to see you. Uh, I love it. Because you're like, hey, you know what's possible. You kind of have to be as a creative. So notice how I group this and my pivot point is down here. Kind of don't want that. Off to the side, we can see transform. We're gonna put this right in the center, okay? And from here, again, holding down my one key, I kind of rotate that around. Uh, but ultimately I wanna lay this flat, right? Where I can grab that rotation point and move it this way, right? And try to get that as flat as possible. And you'll be eyeing it, but honestly you wanna jump over here and say, hey, you know what? The rotation really needs to be 90 degrees, like that, okay? Just like that, we wanna move it to the ground, shabam, S drops it onto the ground. I'll probably throw down a ground plane, so this is where I'm actually creating in 3D, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, we will go back, we'll grab a plane, right? We'll drop that plane right in here. And it massively needs to be scaled up. So since it needs to be scaled up so much, right? Again, rather than using controls, again, just go over here and say, hey, you know what? We'll change this from 20 to say 200. 200, 200. And quite frankly, it's probably gonna be more like 2,000 or 5,000. Let's go 5,000. Rufus is here. Hey, Rufus. <clears throat> All right, and again, this is a perfect case where like, okay, I'm always moving around and manipulating and stuff like that. Uh, I really want to drop in a camera. Like I'm saying, okay, this is the perfect angle. This is where I want to like save this view. So right up here at the top, click right here, show, boom. Uh, we've just added a camera, okay? So this is the camera right in here. So here's the viewport camera that I'm mostly gonna use, right, as I start to move things around, right? So I'll, I'm, I need to make sure each, because really it's just this bottom, bottom one that's sort of down right there. So um, yeah, so obviously I'm changing things. I could jump back to my main view just like that, okay? We also need to be mindful of the size of all of this. Hey, Anissa, good to see you. Good morning. Um, okay, so, oh, I wanted to catch that comment. By the way, feel free. Feel free to art direct me. Tell me what you think, your gut reactions. You think the color's looking too saturated because of the different light colors. Uh, yeah, maybe. I mean, honestly, we'll, we'll be able to tell once we render this. So I don't even have everything in position yet, but that's that's huge. Like I want to be able to like dial in the color, the you know the texture, all those materials. Okay, so let's go back over here. We now have this. We can see the stage size. I'm going to my camera, clicking there. There's my camera that I just added, and this is the output size, uh, 1920 by 1080. But really, ultimately, I want this for say Instagram. So 1080 by 1350. Right, so that's that's the size I'm going for. <clears throat> Come on, buddy. My, I don't know if my keyboard is losing. Uh... <sighs> Doesn't have enough battery life or what? I don't know. But this is what I was thinking about going for. This will help our rendering too, knowing that it's smaller, it'll render faster. <laughs> All right. Okay, so taking a look at this, I'm gonna jump in here and change this to 1080. Um, by the way, I wanna get into some of the other substance tools as well, so. Uh, but we have this here. Let's take a look at our plane, uh, the material on our plane. As we can see, if we go into our base color, it's actually like a light gray, right? So, and I actually wanna crank that up to white, okay? So there we are. 
Um, we're gonna start to see shadows as I render this out. So, shoot, let's just go into ray tracing right now. There we go. So obviously like the colors are changing and all that stuff. All right, it's giving it a second to render. And uh, you can see where that light is coming from. Hopefully I just, I had to step away for a second, but I'm back now. All right, so selecting this environment, let's go into the lights off to the side. And again, we could add as many lights as we want, which is nice. Um, but here I'm rotating the environment light because maybe I don't want it to go kind of to the left. I want it to kind of come down. I want it to be in the upper left and cast that shadow to the lower right. And there we have that, that's coming down. And uh, at this point, I'd probably add some glossiness and different things as well. All right, you like the grain? Batteries are always an issue. My, my keyboard's clear over there. And the thing is the cave of the, the cable doesn't quite reach all the way across. So yeah, so, so what I like is, uh, I like the shadows. Um, yeah, what do you guys think? What are your thoughts? Uh, do I work with different, multiple lighting, right? So what do we do? We can come in and add more light off to the side. You have point light, area light. Area light's really good, spotlight. Obviously you could see what they're gonna do and how they're gonna treat a lot of those elements. I like the area light. Directional might be the easiest, but each one of these is gonna have different properties. And there's a bunch of presets. Oh, I gotta really press down on my keyboard. Uh, let's drop in, say for instance, an area light. Here's my area light. And from here, notice that my arrow light, I have exposure, intensity, the width and the height as well. And really how you manipulate this, rather than dealing with degrees in a properties panel off to the side, you could literally just kind of move this over, right? Or down. So there's my area light. Let's drop in maybe another one up here. And for each one of these, they could have a different tint to them. And uh, just give us a nice look if we're interested in that. I'm gonna play with this really fast. I'm gonna rotate this a touch. And I hope to not break it. You can't really break it. But now you're dealing with all these fun little dots. Kind of hard to tell what's going on. Let's turn off ray tracing. But what I'm trying to do is kind of show a little bit more of that bevel for each one of these. So just kind of like rotating it up just a touch. And then render it. Okay, you guys, I think you guys get the idea. Softer light, you like the grain. Um, cool, let's render this. Let's just hit ray tracing again. I wanna hop into another 3D app. So what, what we're doing is we're gonna to get to this to the point to where I can render out a frame while we jump into another app and I show you how it works. But it's impressive that we just made 3D in Illustrator, like actual 3D OBJ, which has not been possible ever. <laughs> right, remember I used that gloss. I'm really liking the gloss down here. Like that's what I like, I like that stuff, right? The top I'm not crazy about. Now keep in mind I'm working on camera. Let's go to my uh, viewport camera, All right? Jump back to my viewport camera. We could see that everything is casting these shadows and just doing a, a bunch of different things. So I can start to sort of push some of these objects back. Like so. And then go back to my other camera and turn on ray tracing. 
So what we do there, we start to get that uh, shadow from this text onto that text, which I'm into. Um, uh, yeah, how is this different from Dimension? It's not a whole lot different. That's why I said in the beginning, this and Dimension are highly similar. You're gonna have a lot more control in Substance 3D Stager than you do Dimension. Um, you'll just be able to tell that with little things. In fact, I personally like jumping into um, some of these. Now let me think what will work for this. Shoot, you guys know I like flowers and foliage and stuff. But let's take this object. I'm gonna drop in this foliage, okay? This is just a good example of uh, the 3D that you could do in the stager. So take this, we'll rotate it. Uh, with it selected, click. So here is this. And um, let's apply our color to it. And let's change that color to that, this color, there we go. Ultimately, I'm gonna put it, I would put it down on the other letter, but let's just grab this and I'll show you. Uh, one example, so let's go to object. This is a, uh, gosh, what do you call it? It's an object with a lot more settings, cause look at this. Oh, look at, it's a substance. Oh, fancy name, substance. So now we could change all these different uh, parameters for this 3D object. So if I want, if I decide I want less leaves, I could take that down or give it more leaves, right? What about more branches and more leaves, right? You can see the control you get um, in Substance 3D Stager as opposed to Dimension. And that's just one example. Um, and everything has these little controls. If I go over here, so again, I just grabbed this, uh, I think this foliage. If it has this little, these properties, this property icon, it means you can manipulate it. So s these um, shelves, all this stuff, look for that little icon, because you're gonna have additional properties. Same thing for uh, a lot of your materials. There's actually different types of materials. Like, so water doesn't have any, right? But some of these, you could start to tra change the marbling, for instance, in this material, which is pretty awesome. I don't know, I'm, I'm just kind of blown away by that. Because what would you have to do in Illustrator? Uh, draw every leaf, copy and paste, copy and paste. Take that down. Let's transform it. There we go. Go to our camera. And there that is. Yeah, I don't I don't think that adds anything to the design really. But oh thank you, Judith. I'm glad you like that. Because again, I think it's amazing. Carolyn's a believer now. Awesome. Again, the, uh, my whole goal is to show you lots of different tools. I'm gonna take this and say, for instance, you wanna keep it, but you don't wanna render it out or anything. You could, you could go ahead and hide it. So turn off that eyeball just like you would in Illustrator or any other app. And uh, again, we will save this. Haven't even saved our file yet. To our desktop pos possibilities. And then let's render it. By the way, I need to get into some of the other apps because I wanted to show like C4D and all the tools. So over here, notice how this is gonna be the size of my, um, I have presets off to the side. So it's like, you could have it take a while. Ultimately, I'm just gonna do a draft because again, I don't want you guys to wait long. And off to the side, 72 pixels per inch, render it out to my desktop, call it possibilities, do your thing, 
right? So as that's doing its thing, we could use something like uh, Substance 3D Painter. Now let me actually jump out and go to this contest. Uh, okay, I tweeted this out the other day. So, shameless self-promo for me, I guess. We'll jump out to Twitter. Posted this the other day. Because uh, I want to get into this great uh, sneaker, the great sneaker contest. Okay. Let's move down. Where is it? Here we are. Boom. So, uh, Adobe Substance 3D. This is the, the, the great shoe case contest. I don't know why it's called shoe case, but basically we're going to be painting a shoe. So you can go out to this link and I'll paste this in chat. And uh, yeah, have fun painting a shoe. Here's the challenge. Right? And uh, the cool thing, let's try to find our assets. Download the sneaker right here. So I already went through this process. I've downloaded the sneaker and I've loaded it into good old stager. Oops, sorry. Painter, there we are. So this is what you'll do. You'll take that file, you'll open it up and what you'll get, and sometimes you might not get, uh, say for instance, this view. Um, you might get this 3D only view. So here it is. And in this case, we would use the option key is going to rotate things around. Option left click and then option right click, you're going to zoom in. And uh, then you could also reposition it. But here's my, um, just my 3D object. And up here in the top corner, I'm going to show you, we're going to kind of like unwrap it. So we're going to be able to see the 2D uh, file that makes up this sneaker. So here's all these different parts. Oh, yours might not have that on. You will have the brush selected initially. So let me just kind of give you guys some more room. So again, I've downloaded the file. I went to file open. And now I can see this unwrapped off to the side. Right, like so. Uh, using my scroll wheel, I'm kind of zooming down, but we have two different ways to paint. So let's just jump in here. The first way, which you might want to do is just like, you're going to have a brush selected by default. And um, hmm, I kind of messed with this a lot. I wonder if I should reload it again. But let's just go ahead and let's get rid of this. There's layers off to the side. This will become very important. But typically, you won't have all of this stuff. <laughs> Uh, so I got to get rid of it. Ugh, let's get rid of all that. Uh, yeah, I really need to like roll this back. Just so you guys will see the same thing. Because notice how that one was shiny, right? I already applied a material to it, and I apologize. But here we go. We have the flat version right here. We selected a brush. We could select a base color. I'm just going to throw some red or some pink in there. And uh, that looks pretty good. Make sure we're on that layer. I have my brush selected and why am I not able to paint right now? I'm on the sneaker. So you, there might be multiple elements in here, which you would select. And then you're going to have this layer. This layer has a base color. Now that color happens to be, um, actually, no, it's not defined yet my brushes hmm what 
am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? Um, anyways, I'm looking in chat now. And uh, yeah, I guess I gotta figure out why I'm not able to paint on this. There's something has to do with these various layers. So again, I'm on that layer, I should be able to paint. So I don't know, it's kind of, uh, yeah, having a problem. So anyways, okay, you could play with that. I will cover that later or I'll actually circle back to this uh, for my Photoshop segment, if you guys don't mind. Uh, and then I'll figure out like how I jacked with something, but I should be able to paint, I'm not able to. Uh, so, so lame, that's okay. It's actually pretty cool. Hey, a rendering is done, look at that. Doesn't that look nice? Possibilities are everywhere, right? We'll take a look at that asset on my desktop. We can open that up in Photoshop. We'll have all those layers, all that fun stuff. Yeah, pick another layer. I made a new base layer. Uh, the thing is, is it's layers like Photoshop. So that's why it will be good to tie that in with my Photoshop segment. You're gonna have layers and then you're gonna have layer masks. So you could apply a material and then start to add or remove that material based on the layer mask. Okay. So again, right in here, we would do our touch up in Photoshop. Uh, as I turn this on, you can see these different uh, selection layers that you can work with. So if I decide that uh, this purple is not really working, I could obviously manipulate that since I have all these lovely layers right in here. Cool. Okay, you guys like this? Think it looks good? Fantastic. All right. Let's see if we could do this. Let's. I was going to actually jump into Cinema 4D as well, right? So, so the progression was create an illustrator, export it out an OBJ file, substance 3D stager, you can create your whole scene and use some of these design elements, right? All of these objects, or you can kind of make them yourself. So yes, you could use these like procedural, like manipulate these sliders, but ultimately you're gonna to wanna to make some more 3D and maybe used an enhanced uh, 3D tool like Cinema 4D. And again, it's not an Adobe app, but hey, that's okay. Um, it's a tool that I think you uh, should get to know, right? So right in here, I just created this sort of basic elements. You can see right up at the top, you're gonna to have the ability to create elements a number of ways. I would love to show you how you can actually create paths in Illustrator and then bring that content in and extrude it and lay it and do all this fun stuff to it, but you can draw. So these are all your sort of basic uh, objects that you can create, and then you can get into manipulating those objects, sort of extruding them if it was, you know, a text, uh, but I like going in here to all these like distortion tools. Uh, I don't think they're called distortion tools, but you typically call it the actual name of what it is. If I wanted to bend this, for instance, let's take, let's go with bend. Click right there, it adds it right over here. So we have these two layers, a bend and a cube. They're separate. They're like, ah, I am independent of that cube. So what you wanna do is take that and drop it right inside of uh, the cube. So now the bend is gonna modify the cube, okay? So we'll take that bend um, right down here and I'll show you what happens if I select that bend, uh, I'll adjust the strength. So it is bending it right down here. So these are my object properties. So I'm bending the strength, but it's not, it's not doing it right. Like, ah, uh, no, I want it to like bend. It should be like putty, you know? Well, that means my cube will go to my cube. My cube only has one segment per side. I need to give it lots of segments. Click and drag that up. Each one of these, drag it up, drag it up. Give it like 200 or so. Now when I go to bend, there's enough segments to really see it kind of bend over like so. Okay, so those are the fundamentals of Cinema 4D uh, for newbies. So I'm wondering if there's any Cinema 4D friends out there, anyone at all. Cinema 4D Lite comes in After Effects. I thought this would be easier just to open up C4D. But yes, these same principles uh, will apply. You need more segments? Thank you. Rick knows what's up. 
I'm just trying to figure out who my um, C4D peeps are out there. But I'm also down to my last minute as well, which I said I would say we did a lot. Uh, I feel bad about the painter part. Um, I'll have to work on that because I'm like, what the heck? How did I mess it up? But uh, the, the big problem is I can't, for some reason I'm in some mode that I can't, uh, all these are deselected. It's like I can't, I need to unlock these um, and I, I got to figure out why that's the case. So anyway, ultimately you paint and then you can use uh, obviously paint on the actual material right in here. So that's how that works. So Mark Elliott does some C4D. That's good to see. Um, yeah. So thanks everybody. You guys have been awesome. Uh, I got to roll out of here. Uh, total newbie to C4D, but plenty of experience in Fusion 360. So a lot of these, you know, as soon as you get into 3D, a lot of the concepts are the same. So that's the idea. Stick around. I think about T. White up next. Terry White's going to be doing something awesome. I'm going to be creeping in chat. He's going to be talking about 10 tips for re retouching and editing your photos in Photoshop Lightroom Classic and Lightroom. So stick around for that. Appreciate you guys. are awesome. And uh, I will see you in an hour for my Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. Thanks so much, everyone. We'll see you in a second. Bye-bye.